Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to continue our study of the harmonic oscillator. Remember last time we expressed the Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator as h bar omega times the quantity number operator plus a half. So we're concerned with the number operator finding the eigenvalues and eigenstates or eigenvectors of the number, number operator. So if we denote the eigenvalues by eta, we denote the corresponding eigenstate by ket eta, and this is the eigenvalue equation for the number operator. Okay, we left off with this statement here. A dagger acting on ket eta is an eigenstate of the number operator, but with eigenvalue eta plus one. So this is where the raising operator notation comes in. So if somebody says, here's an eigenstate of this equation, what do you do? You plug it in and see what you get. Okay, so we let the number operator act on a dagger ket eta. Now, we want to get the number operator acting on ket eta because we know what the number operator does to ket eta. It just delivers us the eigenvalue eta multiplying ket eta. So we want to switch the order of a dagger and eta, but we can't because they don't commute. But we have this commutation relation. We can switch the order, but we incur we have to add to it a dagger. And now it's fairly easy to see that the number operator acting on a dagger eta gives us eta plus one a dagger eta. Now there's a technical point. This would all be trivial or vacuous if a dagger eta happened to be zero, the zero vector, because zero vectors are eigenstates of anything. Well, we got to rule that out, and we do that in this technical point, which I'm going to leave to you to work out. It's important that you actually work through this, because you're going to learn a lot using the uh, commutation relations and uh, the expressions that we've already derived. So good exercise. Okay, then the next point we want to work out is that A acting on eta is an eigenstate of the number operator, but with eigenvalue eta minus one. There's our lowering operator, okay? It acts on, a, on an eigenstate with eigenvalue eta. It delivers us an eigenstate, but it lowers the eigenvalue by one. Okay. Similarly, it's the same type of calculation that we did above using the commutation relation because we want to get in the number operator acting on ket eta, and we need to switch the order, but we do that, we incur, we have to add this minus a. That was a commutator. Again, we have a technical point where we have to ensure that a eta, the eigenstate, is not zero. And that's just a few line calculations. And I will leave that up to you to do. Now, the last crucial piece, and then we have a nice story, is that the number operator, we know it's positive, it's greater than or equal to zero, but it has a smallest eigenvalue, which happens to be zero. Okay, my head's in the way. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's a little proof by contradiction here. We know this is just repeating what I said. Okay. 
so we s suppose it goes below zero and we get a contradiction but again I will leave this little technical detail to you to fill out and we can remember I'm best we can discuss these things so I expect you to work through each the all the details in the book being leading you through them in these lectures and then if you can have any problems that's when we discuss them in the problem sessions so let's summarize what we have the number operator has eigenvalues zero because it's positive and we said we just argued that it has the smallest eigenvalue zero and then it increases by one zero one two three and so on okay it follows that from the calculation we did that a dagger acting on ket eta is proportional to ket so not n I'm, I'm denoting the op the eigenvalues by n now n plus one proportional why because we can't guarantee that if we if we operate on a normalized eigenstate with an operator it stays normalized so we, we say it's proportional to but we're going to normalize it all right a acting on eta we've shown in our calculations above similarly is proportional to a n uh, cat n minus one and so we deal with it by the proportionality constant by normalizing it because we want all our eigenstates to have norm one okay now that's a good place to stop these calculations were were very slick in some sense and you still ask why does it why does it work well it works because everything came from the commutation relations okay so a acting on ket eta is an eigenstate of n with eigenvalue n minus one okay i'm just repeating what i just said never hurts maybe it's a bit tedious sometimes so that's a good good place to stop we'll stop there so we've derived all of the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator and they're what are they they they're h bar omega times n plus a half where n goes from zero to infinity okay so the classical harmonic oscillator had a um, the Hamiltonian was greater than or equal to zero but it had a minimum of zero the quantum Hamiltonian oscillator never has zero energy the minimum of energy is h bar omega over 2 and then it has discrete jumps of energy from that point on so n plus a half h bar omega we increment by 1, 2, 3 and add a half to each but the classical harmonic oscillator the energy varied continuously from zero to infinity a quantum harmonic oscillator goes to infinity but just in these discrete jumps okay what's what's missing we know all the eigenvalues but what about the eigenstates okay i will pick up with that in the next lecture which will finish up chapter three. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you next time.